One of the most perplexing things about reality is what seems obvious, time. We've all wondered about it. But when you think about time, and then you think about God, then the two together really cause complexity. Yes. Uh, How do you deal with God and time? I, I remember one philosopher who said that if the philosophical importance of a topic can be judged by the amount of nonsense written about it, <laughs> then the concept of time comes somewhat ahead of the concept of space and somewhat behind the concept of God. (laughs) And you put God and time together, you have a subject that is truly baffling and mind-expanding, one of the the, the deepest. I spent 13 years working on this topic as my major research interest, and uh, it's an inexhaustible study. (laughs) All right, 13 years worth. Tell me me what you learned. Well... I think we need to talk about the nature of time, most fundamentally. I think that this is the question. And philosophers have distinguished two radically different concepts of time that will profoundly affect how you view reality and, I think, how you view God's relationship to time. Okay, what are they? One view of time is what we might call a dynamic theory of time or a a tensed theory of time. And what it says is that time is, the moments of time are ordered by past, present, and future, and that these are real and objective aspects of reality. The past is gone. It no longer exists. The present is real. The future has not yet come to be and is not real. And so the future is not sort of out there, ahead of us, down the line, waiting for us to arrive. The the future is pure potentiality. Only the present is real. And so things in time come to be and pass away. There is real, objective, temporal becoming in the world as things come into existence and then pass out of existence. That's the dynamic process or tensed theory of time. Tensed meaning that there are verbs which have past tenses and present tenses and future tenses. Yes, and that those tenses express objective features of reality. That's the key. Now, sometimes you call this the A theory. That's right. That comes from the British idealist J.M.E. McTaggart, who distinguished these two theories, I think, first of all among thinkers, and called one the A theory and the B theory. Not too descriptive, but a convenient (laughs) label. The A is the dynamic one. That's right. The one that I would say is the common perception. I think it is the perception of the common man. It's the common sense view. It's a little hard to discern what is the present because we're moving through the present. I don't know how long the present lasts. That's right, yes. (laughs) That's a little difficult. That's a difficult question. But let's say now we have the dynamic theory, theory A, past is doesn't exist, future is a potentiality. Now, what's the B theory? The B theory, or the static theory, or the tense-less theory of time, says that the difference between past, present, and future is just an illusion of human consciousness. That, in fact, all moments of time are equally real and existent. The future is as real as the present is as real as the past. So, for the people in 1868, 1868 is real, and we are in the future. For the people in 2050, we are in the past, and the present for them is real. But all of those are just subjective standpoints of those observers. In fact, if you could stand back and see things from a sort of God's eye point of view, all moments in time are equally real, and temporal becoming is just a subjective psychological feature of human consciousness, not a real feature of the world. Moving in this path. That movement, that sense of movement, is a purely subjective illusion of consciousness. Because each place in this four-dimensional space-time block is equally real. That's correct, and that is one way to conceive of it, is that the, the universe is a four-dimensional reality, not a three-dimensional reality which elapses or goes through time. Really, things are extended in four dimensions, and the whole space-time block, that whole four-dimensional block, just exists timelessly. And this point of view, though very counter to the common-sense view of time, is very prevalent among physicists. 
and people in the scientific community and certain philosophers as well. Yeah, why is that? Well, I think the main reason is that thinking of reality in four-dimensional terms makes the special and general theories of relativity very easy to grasp it's easy to make a space-time diagram on a piece of paper in which the horizontal dimension represents space and the vertical dimension represents time, and you can represent the whole process there on a diagram which depicts space-time. And I think many scientists interpret the diagrams as literal representations of reality, that reality really is a four-dimensional space-time block. Because the interpretation is, is that absolute space and absolute time have been shown to be erroneous by Einstein. I think that that is one of the major motivations behind the adoption of this B theory or tenseless theory of time is the belief that the A theory or tense theory is incompatible with special relativity. Now, in fact, I don't think that that is true at all. I think it's, it's completely compatible with special relativity. But I, I'm sure you're right that this is one of the major motivations for adopting this four-dimensional view. Let, let, let's just try to understand the B theory, the tense less theory of time, because that's the one that's certainly counterintuitive to our normal way of thinking. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, tense less? How do I deal with the fact that my children were born <laughs> sometime in the past, okay. and I can't use a tense well, to describe what, that. What the, is there a sequence of events? Yes, sequence is still real in the sense that the events in time are related as earlier and later than ah. each other. And that is a real and objective relation. But what the tenseless theorists deny is that things are really and objectively past, present, and future. So they can order things in an, in an earlier or later sense but they don't put a past tense on it as if it once existed and now does not. That's correct. Your birth is always earlier than your death, whether they lie in the future, whether one is in the present, or whether both in the past, your birth is always earlier than your death. But you see here, the word earlier has been robbed of all tense. There, there's no sense in which that which is earlier is past. Uh, it, it is a relationship which is akin to the less than and greater than relationship that stands among numbers. By saying robbed, you're showing your own prejudice, uh, yes, I is, think. That is an emotional Others may term. say you strip out the <laughs> artificiality the, that a human mind has injected into it. Absolutely. That is what they would say. And that they, they would say that uh, there is no mind independent becoming or presentness of reality. So it's a radically different interpretation of the world than the common sense view.